I am Umbu Salma for Volunteer Head of Campus Ambassador in RGP. Institution of Global Professional, served by student and community features. Hello, hello, hello. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to our national free webinar. First, I want to thank, thank you all who are joining with us because you are the gems in our. Once again, I am Miss Alma, core volunteer. And head of campus ambassador in IGP, in his institution of global professional, serve a student and community is providing holistic social work and education. So we held this webinar for knowledge seekers who. Are join with us for learning. We expect that you all are getting a little bit benefited in our personal and professional life, and we wish that you all are remaining with us in long journey. I'm cordially welcoming you all. Enjoy. And stay with us. Today we are presenting the webinar "70 on Language and Literature in Global Unification" with three speaker, Dr. Amrita Bikram Divedi, Vindi Pushpita Shari, Suprato, and Dr. Noor Rasmati. And we have already completed 68. 
webinar successfully. So let's start our program. Amita Bikram Drivedi is a Harvard University certified in the art of writing and public speaking and university faculty specialized in linguistic and literature in the school of language and literature and Sri Matha Sri Matha Baisto Devi University teachers interested in world language documentation writing descriptive dramas and, and the preservation of pure and indigenous language in the South Africa South Asia the National Digital Library of India, Indian Minister of Women and Religious Development, features his 90 lecture in the public domain. Also, the UNESCO Atlas of the World's Language in Danger refers to his two work on the Badhar Wahi language at his official website. His public his books are found in the Library of University Stanford. Some of his books are some time Lux the Sims 2017, a grammar of Badarwahi, and a poetry collection title, A Grammar of Hadoti. He has contributed numerous papers to many science historians, index and corpus I think some have got some network problem. Dear audience, uh, let's welcome today's speaker, today's first speaker, Dr. Amitabh Vikramsa from Jammu and Kashmir, India. Give a warm welcome to Mr. Uh, Dr. Amitabh Vikramsa. Hello, sir. Mm, hi. How are you, uh, sir? Shall I, yeah, shall yeah, I start yeah, my presentation? Yeah. yeah, definitely, sir, definitely. And in between okay, time, yeah. Salma, please repair your network connection. Try to solve the problem within short time. Uh, good evening, all of you, and uh, I welcome you all that you are here to uh, to listen to my this talk. And as you know, that uh, I'll be talking on the topic titled "Pedagogical Stylistics and Approach to Promote Language Learning." But before I start my presentation, allow me to uh, share my slides so it will be a nice interactive session with you and you will get more benefit of the session. Mm, so I, I hope now you are able to see uh, my slide and let me make it a full slide now. So I, I think now you can see the full slide. And uh, the title is, again, I repeat that the pedagogical stylistics. So what do we mean by pedagogical stylistics? Pedagogy is related to teaching, and here we are using pedagogical. So pedagogy is a noun, and we are using in the adjective sense, modifying stylistics. So the the thing is that we are uh, we are introducing stylistics, or we are we are using stylistics as uh, a teaching tool to our students. And why we are doing this? Because uh, we believe that uh, if we introduce stylistics to our second language teachers then they can better promote language learning so in a way we have language and we have linguistics and uh, uh, and we have literature so these three things are there and uh, when we uh, try to join these three things then we have uh, the the field stylistics so how to introduce literature in the class because most of the time uh, students, they are at loss. That uh, where can I, where can we use these things that are taught to us uh, in literature? For example, when Shakespeare says, like, uh, 
uh, let me not to the marriage of true minds admit impediment love is not love then a student is uh, lost that okay where can i say these type of things let me not to the marriage of true minds or let's say uh, when robert burns says uh, my love is like a red red rose then again the student is uh, um, is at loss that okay where can i say these type of construction and what is the use of teaching literature to us because my primary goal is to learn a second language and all the skills which are associated with that like lsrw listening teaching speaking and writing so in a way this uh, presentation will be a blueprint not only for students but also for teachers that how they can introduce literature to their class and how can they extract those language elements from literature and they can pass those elements to their students and how the entire literature can become uh, a good text through which language can be taught so this is basically the scope of this entire presentation now before we start uh, i would like to tell you the nature of language and the nature of communication that we have now there are certain sentences like some of the sentences generally you use in your day to day life and certain sentences you will find that they are the part of uh, literature or you also use once there is some formal occasion but this is how the language is structured and basically i would like to highlight that how language is metaphorical and the entire literature is metaphorical but at the same time you need to understand that language is primary and literature secondary now what do i mean by when i say that language is primary and literature secondary so you can't have a literature without language so for that the necessary condition is language without language there is no literature so we need to understand the nature of language and how language is responsible for uh, creating literature as well as if you want to promote language learning in the classroom the same literature will become helpful in order to teach you language so this interdependence is highlighted in this entire session so these are certain sentences sentence one is like i can hear you john hit mary now what these types of sentences are now you need to think of like whether uh, you are saying the same thing that is understood or you are saying the same thing what is meant the answer is no so when i say john hit mary then some part of john hit some part of mary it's not the the whole of john hit whole of mary so again what we said is not what we meant that is as simple as this i can hear you i am saying something through my mouth and you are listening that thing uh, through your ears so i is my mouth here and you are your uh, ears so it's like again what we say is not what we mean so there is always a mismatch irrespective of the fact whether we are saying something in literature or when when we are using language in day to day conversation so this thing is quite clear this thing is quite clear uh, so clear that even we are not aware of that so if we say she is a pillar of the community and pillar is an pillar is the word from this architectural site and uh, in a building you have a pillar but here we are not talking about the actual pillar of concrete but we are talking about the strength she is a strength of the community so again a substitution a substitution in the form of a metaphor that we are using and as i said previously that language is metaphorical similarly we have this uh, proverb like speech is silver but silence is golden so again the thing is this thing is uh, again like idioms and phrases they are also a uh, metaphorical but what i would like to address address to all of you is uh, that uh, that we need to make our contribution maximum we need to follow the principle of economy we need to follow the principle of minimax when we are into in conversation when we are teaching our students now what is this minimax that means you need to say minimum and mean maximum economy that means you need to use your words like your currency so same thing this thing happens in literature as well and this thing is quite violated uh, in communication but it should be maintained now literature is literature because literature the meaning that literature conveys uh, they are the meanings are never exhausted and uh, literature uh, is written uh, in a manner that it has some coherence uh it has some unity so if we extract something the language portion and if you want to teach something uh, that deals with lsrw skills 
uh, through literature, then it is always a good app, a good option. This is the starting point that we have. So now I have taken one uh, excerpt from Mrs. Dalloway by Virginia Woolf. Now Virginia Woolf is quite famous for uh, her novels and to, to a lighthouse is one such novel. But here I have taken the starting of Mrs. Dalloway. Now, how can this particular text, how, uh, how come the, these few sentences will teach uh, something that is very uh, language wise appropriate? So this is the starting point and I'm reading it for you. Mrs. Delaware said she would buy the flowers herself. For Lucy had her work cut out for her. The doors would be taken off their hinges. Rumpel Mayer's men were coming and then thought Clarissa Delaware, what a morning fresh as if issued two children on a bench. Few sentences, three sentences or four sentences, not more than that, but uh, how much information this text has. Now, the starting is Mrs. Dalloway. Now, this is starting says that how salutations are important and what is the significance of salutation in a cultural setup. Mrs. Dalloway said that she would buy the flower herself for Lucy had her work cut out for her. Now, what is the relationship between Dalloway and Lucy? Why we are using uh, Mrs. Dalloway, but not Mrs. or Miss Lucy here, like Lucy, direct Lucy we are using and here Mrs. Dalloway. So it shows like uh, the servant and the master relationship. So uh, like uh, Mrs. Dalloway is a master, Lucy is uh, uh, a maid here and for Lucy had her work cut out for her. So this information is also there. So this connotative information, like uh, something that is more cultural that is also there. Now you can also cross question that why only Mrs. Delaware has selected to buy a flower herself. And uh, the, the answer is like buying flower is more aesthetically pleasant work. So it's not like you are just washing the dishes. It is not the case that you are just, uh, uh, um, let's say uh, cooking, the, cooking the meal or let's say you are not arranging books in the shelf. But what you are doing, you are doing something more aesthetically uh, pleasant work. So again, this information is also very much there. So uh, this extra, like uh, that's not there, that's not there mentioned in the literal meaning that is not there in the words, but that is reflected from the text that's also there. Now let's come to some grammatical point. Like uh, in the second sentence for Lucy had her work cut out for her. Now you have two her. Now, a language teacher can teach like, OK, the her is your pronoun. And uh, a pronoun gets its meaning from some noun, as we know by definition. So pronoun is here. Here is the anapher. And anapher is in the search of a meaning. And the antecedent Lucy is providing meaning to her. But he, the teacher can also uh, elaborate that both the her are not same. One her is in the objective case. Like when we say for well, Lucy had her work cut out for her. So here the last her is in the objective case, whereas her work here, it is the relative case, possessive case. So again, both the words and uh, when the word that has more than one meaning or more association, then it is also known as uh, uh, ambiguous. So teacher can also introduce the concept of ambiguity that is there. So the word her, one is in the objective case, another is in the relative case that is mentioned here. Now, at the same time, at one place we have Mrs. Dalloway and at one place we have Clarissa Dalloway. Why is it so? This is again an interesting thing. You are introducing same person in the first line. You are using proper salutation and the in the fourth line, let's say you are using Clarissa Dalloway, first name and the last name. And why writer is doing this thing? So these are the things that the teacher can introduce, can ask to their students and a student will become uh, will transform from a passive, passive listener to active participator. So they will also answer many things when they read this text carefully, when appropriate questions are asked by the teacher. So here, what is this sentence where Clarissa Delaware is mentioned? We need to read it and then thought Clarissa Delaware. So that means the person is thinking about herself. So when you think about yourself, you will not think about like, OK, if I am thinking about myself, then I will not write Dr. Amita Vikram Divedi is thinking. I will not say like, I will say like, OK, Amita is thinking. So this is like, uh, because here the, in the sentence, Clarissa Delaware is thinking about herself or thinking something. That's why here 
the Clarissa Delaware is mentioned and not Mrs. Delaware. So this thing is also there where once you once you have this first person narrative, then you have this third person narrative that is. Now, one more thing that is there that what a morning fresh as if. Now, as if when you use this as if, then teacher can also introduce like this concept of as if and as though. And once you use this as if, then obviously it is like some some hypothetical fee, hypothetical uh, uh, area you are reaching to, and that's why you use this past tense as if issued to children on a bench. So there is a comparison as if with as if you have. So teacher can say that okay, uh, uh, when we use metaphor, then we do not use this type of word like as and like, but when we use like simile, then we use as. And here that type of comparison is there. So morning is compared to uh, uh, issued to children on a bench. So this type of comparison that we have. So as you can see that uh, so much information that we have and we are not teaching these things in isolation. So that is basically the purpose that why we should go for a literature uh, or why we should go, why should why we sh our teacher should go for a literature into the language teaching class because uh, literature has so many things to offer. Let's say in the first line itself, Mrs. Delaware said she would buy the flower herself. Now, again, this is like this direct, direct, indirect narration uh, we are into. And we have again two pronouns here, she and herself. And both these pronouns, they refer to Mrs. Delaware. So there are so many things, even like you can teach, like what is the role of uh, uh, discourse marker? And then now and then what is the role of and then here in the last sentence? And then. Now, and then is a discourse marker. So you can ask, the teacher can ask the student, okay, do you think of and then type of thing in your language? Because here it's the starting of a story. And in a story, we have, we have narrativity. One thing happens, then another thing happens. And in order to make a link between something that is said previously and something that is going to be said in future sentences, you need some discourse marker, cohesive devices. And the function of and then here is simply to connect what is said and what is going to be there. So again, uh, the, the same thing I have highlighted uh, in red font, in green font, in order to show that what the things are happening. So one thing that I have missed like there, so the doors would be taken off their hinges, then obviously there refers to doors uh, here, and uh, Rumpelmeyer's men were coming. So this Rumpelmeyer's men, so you can also ask like Rumpelmeyer's men, like who can be the Rumpelmeyer's men? So obviously like uh, uh, some carpenter or some uh, some people who take care of uh, uh, those doors uh, who are, which are coming, uh, uh, taken off uh, their hinges. So that type of thing that is there. So, so many things uh, that are there at the same time, like you can, you can, you can see like morning fresh. Morning fresh is a, a phrase. What a morning fresh. Then what is the use of this hyphen here uh, between morning and fresh and why this hyphen is used? So there are so many things uh, that you find in a classic, particularly in a classic and not in a pulp fiction. So if you take certain portion of a classic and you take that thing into the class, then you can teach so many language elements to your students. And... Uh, uh, it will not be the case that your student will only learn those language elements, but they are also literature wise uh, informed so it, so that they, it will generate an interest uh, in them and they will read these type of works. So again, like uh, uh, let let's assume like next situation we have and in this situation we have a simple story like anyone can write these lines. A little girl went for a walk in the park while while there she saw a rabbit since it was injured she took it home again like something uh, some words that are in green so uh, intentionally i i made them in this font so while there now while there is again that cohesive device that discourse marker that you have because though there are only two sentences three sentences but still you have some sort of narrativity a little girl went for a walk in the park while there so now you can ask like what is there here while there so there is like it refers to in the park so there is again anaphor and anaphor is in the search for its meaning and the meaning is found in the previous sentence. That means this there in order to search its meaning, crossing the sentence boundary, reaching to the previous sentence and then gets its meaning. 
she saw a rabbit again she refers to a little girl then you have a rabbit and since it was injured then obviously it refers to rabbit then she again refers to a little girl and it again refers to the the rabbit so once there is a narrative once there is more than one sentence then technically linguistically it is a definition of a discourse if you have more than one sentence then it creates a discourse linguistically at the same time when there is a discourse then obviously you have one sentence second sentence and how then these certain sentences are interlinked and interrelated to each other and here the same thing is happening now uh, this is the we have seen the discourse marker the role of discourse marker how you can introduce and there are certain linguistic items uh, you can teach through literature at the same time here what is the role of the topic and uh, uh, how the the first sentence is very crucial when you introduce something that you can also teach so this is like a very uh, simple story it looks like once upon a time there was a merchant with two sons so like a merchant and two sons they are the topic that means like entire thing will be dependent upon them the older son so we are we have not selected a merchant uh, we are not interested in saying something about the merchant but we are more interested in saying something about the son the older son now the topic of the second sentence will become the older son the older son wanted to be a scholar he spent his time reading and studying as for the younger son he preferred to travel and see the world so again in sentence 1 uh, two elements are introduced a merchant and two sons but we said something more about those two sons and we didn't say anything about a merchant so this is again a way like you can introduce more than one topic in the initial topic sentence but later on you can uh, you can select like uh, which element you want to give importance so this is all thing about the discourse that how things happen one after another and here the role of like as for as for is again the the discourse marker that you have so this discourse marker they plays a very important role because uh, when student uh, students generally uh, particularly uh, when they they are writing more than uh, one sentence uh, in the form of explaining uh, a process a product or let's say an experiment then they need to write more than one sentence and what happens like most of them their their each sentence is so stand alone that there is no link between sentence 1 and sentence 2 that this is the problem and how the the uh, the discourse markers they function as a cohesive device and they built uh, a narrativity in the entire structure so uh, we we have, we have we have this concept and uh, because of this cohesive devices we have this concept of a text now a text that we have in the classroom that is in the physical form but we are not interested in something that is in the physical form but we are more more interested in something that is uh, that is the content wise rich, rich. and as i said that uh, literature particularly classical literature uh, it is the meaning is never exhausted in the classical literature so you have multiple layers of meaning so that means content wise they are very much rich but whatever the, uh, the the text that you have you need to understand one thing that the text must occur in a context so uh, a text is a text because it occurs in a context so there is a direct link between a text and a context so for example whatever i am saying now to you is a text because it occurs in a context because we know that why we are meeting here and what we are doing here so this becomes the context but this is not only any type of context but it is like a knowable context that you have you know you know the context because we have thousands of contexts available in this world in the real life situation likewise we have thousands of words available in a dictionary we do not know the meaning of each and every word but the context helps us to find out the meaning so similarly we have a text and that occurs in a context particularly it is a knowable context that we have so we have seen till now that how literature language and linguistics they are interwoven how they are interrelated to each other so it's not the case that literature you are reading literature in isolation when i say you are reading literature in isolation that means i am uh, i am just focusing on the fact that uh, you you are reading literature simply for pleasure you do not find extra meaning 
you do not find language elements but that is not the case once our purpose is different once we are studying literature in a discipline so let's say you are doing a course let's say masters in english literature then you are not reading literature for pleasure you are reading literature as a discipline and once you read something as a discipline then obviously it must be studied in a disciplined manner so that's why like we can see that like literature a textual form and object of study we have language that is responsible for the creation of literature but at the same time language is also an object of study and linguistics here it's it is the meta language because the language used about language so how these three things are interrelated interdependent and stylistics our pedagogical stylistics unites these three things into one now as i said that literature can be used to introduce uh, language items in the class so again we will take this example of the shakespearean sonnet shall i compare thee to a summer's day the ward more lovely and more temperate rough winds to shake the darling buds of may and summer leaves hath all to shorten date dot 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 here we have taken only two lines now there is a possibility that a student will ask like where can i use this type of sentence shall i compare thee to a summer's day why you are teaching us what is the purpose of teaching this line what is the purpose of teaching this uh, sonnet because i i cannot find any real life situation where i can use shall i compare thee to a summer's day where you have so many archaic words inside here inside the text so now the role uh, of the teacher becomes crucial because let's say a uh, teacher can ask a questions like okay why you are starting uh, this first line with auxiliary shall the, the student will say obviously like because you are raising a question and what type of question you are raising is shakespeare seeking an answer from the audience no then what type of question is there when there is not an actual inquiry then you can have two types of questions like one question that is related to an inquiry and another type of question that is a rhetorical question that we have so shall i compare thee to a summer's day falls under the second type a rhetorical question what is the nature of rhetorical question the nature of rhetorical question is that the person raises the question at the same time person provides the answer so shakespeare is raising a question and shakespeare is providing the answer okay this is one thing so it starts with an auxiliary ends with the mark of interrogation these are the indicators that show like it is a question teacher can raise a question okay if i use i shall compare the two or some other then what will happen then obviously you are converting an interrogative to a declarative teacher can raise a question to student if you want to replace this one or two words what replacement you will provide because uh, in asian countries like summers are not pleasant at all so how can you compare your beloved with a summer there is a problem like it is a it is a sarcasm uh, in place of praise so a student will come out with an answer like okay you can substitute summer with spring or you can substitute day with morning so you can say shall i compare the to a spring's morning you can you, you can say like that so you are replacing this thing Uh, you are you are replacing summer with spring you are replacing day with morning then what type of re replacement is this so linguistically uh, linguistics inform informs us that this type of replacement is known as paradigmatic that means in language we have choices it is not the case like we can always use summer we can use spring we can use winter we can uh, use day we can use night anything we can use at the same time the relationship between shall and i and compare and the and to a uh, summer's day so these words they interact with each other and if we change the word order then most of the time the english sentence will become uh, ungrammatical so if i say shall compare i to the a uh, day summer then you will say okay what are you talking about this is not english that means teacher can tell that in english language we need to be more focused on the word order and the basic word order of the english language is subject verb and object the similar type of thing like how one word interacts with other word on the horizontal plane that is basically we are talking about the syntagmatic relationship and this is how the language functions this is how the language works similarly thou art more lovely and more temperate teacher can also introduce the, okay you want to change temperate with something else student say okay we want to change temperate with calm you teacher says okay do you want to change lovely with any other word a student can say okay we want to change it with beautiful 
then uh, okay we want to change thou because we do not use thou nowadays so we use you you are more beautiful and more calm so this type of creativity uh, you can you can do with your students you can introduce the text and this will introduce uh, this will uh, uh, this will fill uh, confidence in the students because they will know that okay we can also write a sonnet in future because sonnet writing is not such a difficult thing so if shakespeare has written a sonnet then we can also try our hand on writing a sonnet after all a sonnet has only 14 lines so this is how a literature becomes meaningful uh, there so when we talk about a text and when we talk about how text uh, attains textuality then obviously these two types of relations they come into being a paradigmatic relation these relations are of contrast and substitution and syntagmatic relation these relations are of combination and co-occurrence restrictions so particularly in the english language and most of the languages that are spoken across the globe we have this co-occurrence restrictions so that means like we live in a family similarly words they also live in a family so certain words they are close with other words and certain words they are not so close with those words so if we discuss paradigmatic relationship then it occurs at every level so cat is a cat because cat is not sad sat is a sat because sat is not mat and what is the difference between cat sat and mat only the initial sound the initial sound is different so that means like when we change one sound the entire meaning is changed that means these sounds they occur in minimal pairs at the same time like when we go for writing a poetry or when we consider to make it a rhyming a rhyme scheme then this paradigmatic function has also a stylistic effect the sun is shining bright it is a lovely sight now what is the relationship between sight and bright so we have a relationship of end rhyming because we are writing a verse and we are not writing a prose so that's why like when there is an end rhyme then the verse sounds good so the sun is shining bright it is a lovely sight so this substitution we have so initial like deliberately we are choosing these words we are deliberately choosing word bright and we are deliberately choosing word sight so if i say the sun is shining bright it is a lovely scene so scene is not rhyming with bright or when we say uh, the sun is shining uh, uh, let's say um, what what can sun is shining um, bright and it's uh, it's a lovely scene then again like scene and bright they are not rhyming with each other so again like paradigm paradigmatic relationship they also uh, uh, they come into play when you when you are talking about individual words individual sounds when you are talking about uh, the rhyming scheme at the same time we will see one example of syntagmatic like we can't say cat the sat on mat the we know the will always come before cat because articles they are very much important in english language determiners are very much important in english language but we know that we can say the dog slept on the mat we can say the cat slept on the couch these type of replacement we can make so these are choices that we have this combination this contrast this substitution that we can make but combination and co-occurrence restrictions must be there so these relations uh, they were actually taught uh, talked about by ferdinand de saussure known as the founder of modern uh, linguistics and saussure says very important thing that everything depends upon relation now what do we mean by when we say everything depends upon relation like uh, we live in a family and we know like how important relations are for us so at the same time it's not the case that only for human beings relations are important when we use individual words they also interact with each other and if they are not placed properly then obviously the entire thing will become meaningless so when we say the cat sat on the mat then each word is interacting with other word and that's why this entire sentence utterance becomes meaningful that is entire the meaning that is the philosophy of language uh, is going on side by side when you start teaching language to your student how so this is the way how this language is entirely constructed and structured and uh, a little knowledge of linguistics will also be helpful for a second language teacher to introduce this thing into the class so we start with a minimal word and once we have more than one sounds then we can have morphemes we have more than one morphemes we can have word or words 
then uh, we, we have like more than one words then we have a phrase then we have a clause and we have a sentence the difference between clause and sentence is like in a sentence you can have we can have more than one subject and predicate but in clause we have only one uh, subject and one predicate so that is basically the difference so this is how this language is structured and as you can see like it starts uh, with this minimum uh, one single sen uh, single sound segment and reaching to the sentence now, as I said previously, that uh, when we have more than one sentence, then we have a discourse linguistically. Now, this one sentence I have taken from Halliday and Hassan uh, from the book Cohesion in English. And what is this sentence like? Wash and core six apples, put them in a bowl. A teacher can raise a question like, do you find any subject here? They will say, no, it's missing. Teacher can ask like, OK, you can use uh, a construction where there is no subject. They will say, thank you. Yes, in thank you, you have no subject. So it's like I thank you, but I is missing. So what type of construction is this type? Like the, when the subject is missing, but subject is recoverable from the context. That means this, this is known as ellipsis. That is the part of this elliptical construction that you have. And generally in the imperative sentences, you have this type of subjectless sentence. So here it is like a command, a direction, or an in, uh, instruction that wash and core six apple, put them in a bowl. Teacher can ask the question like, what do we mean by them here? They will say them refers to six apples. So that means them is an anaphor and anaphor is crossing its boundary and reaching to the antecedent six apples and six apples is very gladly giving its meaning to them. So that means like there is some cohesive relation across boundary if two sentences, they are creating a discourse. And this is the thing that the students, they need to learn that we need not to use the language in isolation in one sentence stand alone, second sentence stand alone, third sentence stand alone, but we need to create a discourse. We need to create a narrative. Even if we are explaining about uh, a process, even when we are talking about like the description of a product or even if, when we are describing an experiment. So at the same time, like when I said, like text occurs in a context and knowable context is quite crucial to ascertain the meaning of a text. Think of a situation like the student greets the teacher, good morning, and in return, the teacher replies, Tolstoy, war and peace. Now, a student is, is, uh, is, is, is in a fixity, like what type of response is there? Because the response of uh, good morning is good morning, good afternoon is good afternoon. And the student is greeting teacher, good morning, but the response is Tolstoy, war and peace. What type of response is this? Now think of a situation that the student has taken a book, war and peace by Tolstoy from the teacher and the student is not returning despite the, the teacher has reminded the students a couple of times. Then the, when the student uh, uh, greets good morning, the teacher thinks like, oh, okay, I don't give a damn to your good morning. First written my text, Tolstoy, war and peace. Now, what is this? How can war and peace will become a response to good morning because of the context because in this context war and peace is quite meaningful then the the, the reply good morning so sometimes it happens like the the reply of good morning uh, will become tolstoy war and peace second situation like you come uh, a student comes late into the class and teacher says good morning now here it's not the way the teacher is treat, uh, is greeting a student good morning but here the good morning means okay you are late today do you understand this thing so this sarcasm is there so this is like language is quite meaningful language changes its meaning when it is used in some some context so context is responsible for giving text meaningfulness similarly you have this rod sign stop now you know like this sound this sign has only some meaning when it occurs alongside roads if it is occur anywhere else then it has no meaning so again like uh, whether it is like a sign like a stop then also context plays a crucial role now another such another this uh,
dear participants please allow us some moment we lost our speakers so uh, we have we need some time to get uh, back to the speaker again so uh, please stay with us we'll be get uh, we'll be back soon within short time So we are trying to connect with our first speaker, Dr. Amitab, sir. Uh, I think uh, he got some more difficult problem with internet. So uh, we should focus on the next speaker. Wendy, ma'am, uh, are you there? Wendy, ma'am, can you hear me? Wendy, ma'am. Hello, ma'am. Hello, ma'am. Salma, can you hear me? Sir. Yes, I can hear you. OK. Wendy, ma'am, can you hear me? Hello. Hello, ma'am. Hello, ma'am. Can you hear me? Hello, ma'am. We have another speaker, uh, Dr. Noor, ma'am. Dr. Noor, ma'am, are you there or can you hear me clearly? Hello, sir. Yeah, can you uh, can you hear me clearly? Yes, I can hear your voice. Can you oh. hear my voice? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, ma'am, uh, switch on your camera and uh, just uh, share your slide. Then uh, you will be the second speaker and cause uh, on schedule, Wendy ma'am will be the second, but uh, no response from her side. So you can present your slides. All right, thank you. Hang on a second. Okay. I'm going to share the PowerPoint. Yeah, definitely.
All right. Uh, so, presentation was. Yeah, uh, make it presentation mode. Make it presentation mode or reading mode. Okay. Is this uh, presentation mode? No. You have to click on the. Uh, you have to click on the. Uh, bottom part you can see uh, reading mode or presentation mode hang on at the bottom part at the bottom part or you can click on slideshow you know in uh, up top of the screen is it the presentation mode now no no. No. Not yet. No change. We can't. We can't see you. Your camera is switched off. Okay, hang on. Okay. Yeah. Now we can see you. Mm -hmm. All right. Um. But your so slide is not in presentation mode. So I, I I already look at the um, bottom. Yeah, you can see the bottom part of the presentation, a reading mode. Uh -huh, so okay. click on, click on the reading mode. Reading mode. I can only uh, see four buttons there. That's why I that's why I suggest that for a trial. I cannot find the button. At the bottom part, look at the part of bottom part. Yeah, you can see reading mode where you can uh, increase or uh, decrease the uh, slide. Mm -hmm. uh, so only two arrows going to. Uh, can you change the slide? Can you change? You can. Uh, can you change the slide one first to second? Uh, to change, the, to change only, the slide to forward. There's only uh, next yeah. button. Yeah. Click Perfect. on next button. Next button. Uh -huh. but nothing, can you see? Nothing. No. No. Nothing moving here. Okay. Should I stop the step screen? First? Yeah, you yeah. click click on your screen at the left side screen bar. Click on your slide the left screen or your screen bar or bottom uh, top part of the presentation. You can see an option slide share. Okay, uh, um, or just use. I'm going F5. to do stop sharing first because I already. Or you, or you can use or or you can use uh, when you are in presentation or you open your PPT then use F5. Mm -hmm. Ma'am, if you mm -hmm. allow me, if you allow, then in between time we can uh, jump for the next speaker. Cause okay, then, yeah, okay. In between time, you you can uh, you can uh, uh, some manage some query also. And uh, one right. more thing is that we already get Omitav sir again. All right, thank you. <laughs> okay, oh, uh, we I, will, I was now not we aware back of to that. Again, I Omitav sir. Connected. Then uh, then Wendy ma'am. After that, uh, our special uh, guest, Dr. Noor ma'am. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay, sir. You may you may continue again. So uh, I I I thought like I realized very lately when I ended my session that I was disconnected uh, because no one informed me. Uh, like, uh, so uh, where was I? Like actually, uh, because I was presenting something. So, so I was. I, I thought that I thought that you disconnected and you will be connected within a short time. But uh, okay, okay. I I messaged Andy, sir. No. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, because like I didn't receive any uh, any message from uh, Andy. So, uh, so where was I actually? Like, um, because I discussed so many things. So, can you just uh, tell me that uh, where was I? 
like i just i was just i was discussing so many things Salma, so i don't want to repeat them yeah definitely salma which is which is the last part of abhishek uh, amitav sir Okay, you want yeah, to see the slide. Have, okay. You have to see the slide. Okay, okay. So, uh, I was discussing pedagogical uh, thing. Then I was I discussed this Mrs. Delaway. Then uh, the new information, old information. Sir, share your slide. Then uh, she can uh, re uh, realize easily. Okay. So, uh, let me share the slide. so now i think i you can see the slide so i was discussing these things uh, uh sentence discourse new information old information topic text how they are interrelated then this uh, this shakespeare sonnet um, it's already done it's already done then these things sign then the how I think, text I is think, i think this is the slide maybe this one i think and you have uh, these like uh, example of text from this tolstoy war and peace and no no these no, are no, not no, this no. okay no. i think this one okay from here yeah okay so this is almost the entire <laughs> presentation <laughs> so no problem no problem and in between time our uh, rest of two speakers will get time, more time okay okay fine so um, so please uh, like uh, in between 5 10 minutes give me like one signal type of like hmm ha so that i will <laughs> like i am online <laughs> <laughs> okay okay sir okay okay fine okay, yeah, so okay, um, okay so uh, we were discussing like how the text is constituted so we can see like we start with the minimal sound that is a, a phoneme that is there and once we have more than one phoneme then we can have morphemes we can have more than one morphemes then we have words more than one words we have phrases then clauses and sentence so this is how the entire language is structured that we have a, a little linguistic knowledge uh, tells us that uh, uh, we start uh, with a very minimal sound segment phoneme and we reach to a syntax uh, a sentence and in syntax generally sentence is the largest unit so uh, the difference between clause and sentence is like uh, in a sentence we have more than one subject and predicate but generally in a clause we have only one subject and one predicate so this information that we have and as we said like when we talk about a discourse then linguistically speaking when we have more than one sentence then it creates a discourse now here this example we have from Heide and Hassan and uh, from the book titled Cohesion in English, published in 1971, wash and core six apples, put them in a bowl. Now, a teacher can raise the question like, what type of sentence is this? Uh, because there is no subject here. It's a subjectless uh, uh, construction. Teacher can raise the question, okay, where can you use such type of uh, sentences? A student will say, or they may say that, okay, when we, when we thank someone, thank you. We won't say, I thank you. I is understood. So they say simply, thank you. So here we have this subjectless position that we have, and this subjectless position uh, in in an imperative sentence is quite common. But at the same time, this is also an example of ellipsis. That means something that is recoverable from the context. At the same time, a uh, student can raise uh, uh, raise uh, raise a question that uh, uh, a teacher can raise a question like, what is the meaning of them here? them is a pronoun them is an anaphor and this anaphor is in the search of a meaning so which grammatical element is giving meaning to them six apples actually six apples become the antecedent and this antecedent gives meaning to them so we have cohesive relations uh, relation here and one sentence that is interdependent upon or one sentence is getting its meaning to another sentence or these two sentences are interrelated to each other and one sentence is crossing the sentence boundary in order to get its meaningfulness this entire thing creates a discourse that means your interrelatedness interdependence that is responsible for creating a discourse that we have so as i said like context is important uh, then think of a situation like a student uh, greets a teacher good morning and in reply teacher says a tolstoy war and peace 
now uh, student is in fixity student is surprised that why teacher is saying war and peace in place of answering into answering to me good morning because the answer of good morning is good morning so this is again quite contextual so think of a situation that uh, the student has borrowed a book titled war and peace written by leo tolstoy and the teacher has given couple of reminders to student that return my book but student is not returning the book so one fine day when a student greets the teacher good morning teacher abruptly replies tolstoy war and peace so now you know that in what situation tolstoy war and peace can become a reply to good morning so again text is not that important but the context is important anything will become meaningful if it is contextualized and not only contextualized in any random context but it is a knowable context that we have similarly when you find the road sign stop alongside a road then definitely you know that if a road sign stop occurs alongside road then it is meaningful if you find this road sign uh, stop anywhere else then you know that it has no meaning so context gives meaning to certain things now next uh, <coughs> sentence colorless green ideas sleep furiously now this sentence is uh, uh, this sentence is by noam chomsky and noam chomsky introduced this sentence in a book titled syntactic structure published in 1957 now what is this sentence colorless green ideas sleep furiously now ideas a plural noun and it has a plural verb sleep and you have uh, an adverb modifying verb furiously then you have two modifiers green and colorless at the same time colorless green ideas sleep furiously it is a perfectly grammatical construction but what is the meaning there is no meaning because ideas they do not have any color if something has a color like green then it can't be colorless at the same time even if you have an idea then idea cannot sleep and even something or someone sleeps then no one and nothing can sleep furiously you can sleep peacefully you can sleep calmly you can sleep nicely but not furiously so again what is more important meaning is more important than the uh than the grammar so it's not the case like everything is grammatical perfectly fine then it will become meaningfulness automatically a teacher must tell the student that you need to take care of grammar that is one thing that is the must and the second thing is you need to take care of meaningfulness whatever you are saying is meaningful or not so colorless green ideas sleep furiously can become meaningful in a linguistic class can become meaningful if i am teaching meaningfulness if i am teaching that grammar is important at the same time the construction must be appropriate so here now we introduce the concept of context so text must occur in a context if a text is not occurring in a context then the text become meaningless but we have thousands and millions of of context now the important thing is when we try to find out the meaning of the text when we try to find out when we try to know the meaning of the text then the knowable context is more important than any random context and when we have this knowable context then we have a discourse so and there is a critic known as mikhail bhaktin and he he said like this knowable context is known as concrete living totality that means once we try to find out the meaning of an utterance then we use all our permutation and combinations related to associated to uh, to a particular utterance or sentence and then we try to find out the meaning of that something that is said so now uh, when we communicate with each other or when i said like literature is important and a teacher must go with a literary text into a language classroom because uh, a literary text has multiple layers of meaning then this one liner is also important uh, and this one liner is given by ernest hemingway and what is this one liner for sale baby shoes never worn now teacher can raise the question how many words are there they will say six 
they can count them very easily but what is the story behind this these six words baby shoes never worn that means the baby is dead parents are selling those shoes uh, selling those shoes which were never worn so again there is a very sad story associated with that so we are not mentioning like why the baby is uh, dead um, there might be a reason because of some internal conflict war uh, or, or a disease we are not saying this but again lots of things which are unsaid are actually said so here though there are only six words but they are creating a very fine story here and here we follow the economy principle and the iceberg theory so you know the concept of the iceberg that only 1% is visible 99% is inside the water so similarly when you take a literary text into the class then allow your students to discover more meanings that are there in the in the text help students to become a creative thinker rather than simply a rote learner and at the same time uh, a work is a classical work a work is considered classic when it follows this economy principle so that means like the words that are used uh, they say so many things about the language the language aspects that we have so uh, similarly uh, we have this principle of compositionality as well so uh, when we construct uh, uh, something in a language then the meaning of a sentence a meaning of uh, an utterance clearly depend depends upon at least two other things the meaning of the words in the sentence and the grammatical structure of the sentence so this is the basic thing this is the basic thing that when someone is saying something or when something is said then we already know that Uh, the person who is saying those things or something that is said the person knows the individual meaning of those words at the same time how those words are to be combined together that is basically known as the principle of compositionality and all the time uh, when we say something then we follow this principle of compositionality uh, consciously or unconsciously so teacher can also take such type of text like this the red wheel barrow by william carlos william now you will find this text uh, like someone is talking in bits and pieces so much depends upon a red wheel barrow glazed with rain water beside the white chickens now not a single word is a difficult word in this in this text but you have lots of things in this in this eight line poem and in in certain uh, in certain uh, lines you have only one word so a teacher can raise a question that why the writer is not writing glazed with rain water in one line why glazed with rain and water in the next why why the red wheel and barrow in the next line beside the white and chicken in the line so there must be there must be uh, something that is there uh, the writer is making these choices so much depends then upon is in the next line so what is the purpose what is the purpose so the, the teacher can take these type of small text easy to learn text and teach language elements to their uh, to their students so similarly uh, uh, when we teach language or when we teach uh, Uh, things which are related to uh, language then obviously uh, we we can also tell our students that uh, when you write something when you say something then you need to follow these maxims and what are these maxims like uh, the maxims of relevance maxim of quality maxim of quantity maxim of manner actually these maxims were introduced by jl austin in the book titled how to do things with word published in 1960 these are actually the essence of entire conversation that we uh, that we have so let's say you are you are teaching your students like how to speak effectively and you are teaching your student how to speak effectively then that means like they need to follow these maxims and if they are violating these maxims then obviously they can't speak effectively whatever you say you need to be relevant you make your contribution as true you need to be appropriate neither more nor less and you need to avoid obscurity and ambiguity 
So these are the things that you need to follow. Uh, you need to tell your students uh, that uh, you need to follow these things. At the same time, uh, we need to tell our students that uh, it's not always the case that the word and the sentence, uh, they mean only one thing. There is a concept of ambiguity as well, that you say something and it means something different. So I'm going to the bank. And if you say the same thing in the morning, then it has different meaning. And if you say the same thing in the night, it has different meaning, provided you have a river bank as well, because bank means river bank and bank means financial institution. So when you say I'm going to the bank during the daytime, then there is a possibility like, okay, you are actually going to a financial institution, but you are saying at 10 p.m., then I'm going to the bank means that you are going to a, a river bank. So you can introduce the concepts of ambiguity and uh, uh, like the beliefs and attitudes, uh, how important they are. So you can see that these two sentences are almost same except the last word. In the first sentence, you have cautious. In the next sentence, you have dangerous. The judge denied the prisoner's request because he was cautious. Now, who is he here? He here is judge. But the judge denied the prisoner's request because he was dangerous. Who is he here? He means prisoner. Because we know that judge cannot be dangerous, but a prisoner can. And in the previous sentence, it is the judge. So uh, these beliefs and attitudes, they are also responsible for ascertaining the meaningfulness of a given text. Similarly, presuppositions. Have you stopped exercising regularly? Have you tried exercising regularly? So different type of meaningfulness is associated with the word stopped and tried. So if I say Rita drives a car to her office daily, then this utterance has so many presuppositions. That means Rita knows driving, Rita possesses a car, Rita owns a car, Rita works in an office, and, and uh, Rita, there is the possibility that Rita is an independent woman. So lots of things which are not said overtly, explicitly, that are already the part of things. So we also use this presupposition thing uh, with our uh, situation. And uh, generally, when we talk about this real life conversation, uh, then we, we follow these principles like, would you like to go to a movie tonight? So there is a possibility that you will not say yes or no directly, but you will say, I have to study for an exam. and this answer means no here that means like i am busy with my exams i can't go with you so again like uh, would you like to go for a movie i have to study for an exam this is quite uh, the maintaining the maximum of relevance that your answer is quite relevant here so similarly uh, would you like to go to a movie tonight and uh, you will say it is a bit warm in here then obviously you will find like, okay, what is the relationship between uh, going to a movie tonight and it is a bit warm in here. So again, there is a bit mismatch here. So that means like we have this concept of conversational implicature. That means like uh, we draw inferences about what is meant, but not what is actually said. So that is also very much relevant once you are teaching your student uh, to draw meaning of something that is said at the same time to say something that is meaningful. So all those things are there and there are lots of things that uh, I can discuss here, but uh, due to the paucity of time and I know that I am waiting other two uh, speakers as well. So uh, very briefly in five minutes, I would like to say that when the teacher is going to a class, then teacher can go with uh, such type of template where teacher can introduce glossary items, definitions. Let's say teacher is teaching English uh, language through poetry here. Key examples, counter examples, lists of objective, video lectures, core references, additional references. Likewise, so many things teacher can take with him or her. At the same time, let's say when teacher is teaching, let's say these two lines come with me uh, and be my love and we will all the pleasures prove. Teacher can raise a question like why you have uh, future tense in the second line and not in the first line. Then come with me and be my love. What type of response is this? What type of utterance is this? Then the imperative response that we have discussed, like where the subject is elliptical. Then teacher can raise a question like, can you find out the substantial word and the functional word? That means the words like noun, adjective, adverbs, and the words like uh, functional words like determiners, then the prepositions, uh, connectives. So that type of question can be asked. If the teacher is teaching, uh, let's say phonetics, then teacher can ask like, okay, which word starts with the k sound? Which words starts with the l sound? 
then teacher can ask like okay how many ma sounds are there in these two lines or love sounds rhymes with which word so that type of thing teacher can uh, ask students so this is uh, from uh, from my side and i hope still i am online here yes because i was quite fearful that uh, it should not be the case that uh, i again become uh, <laughs> the lone speaker and no one is listening to me but fortunately i think like this time this uh, uh, this didn't happen yes sir you were with us <laughs> <laughs> okay salma go for the next I think we can't hear you, Salma. Okay, forget about that. Uh, let's move for next speaker. Uh, our next speaker is Wendy, ma'am. Uh, so let's welcome our second speaker, Wendy, ma'am. And uh, I will meet again, Dr. Amitabh sir, in the last part of group Q and A. In between time, uh, just keep blessing, sir. Yeah. Hello, ma'am. Wendy, ma'am, can you hear me? Wendy, ma'am, can you hear me? Yes, sir. I yes, hear sir. you. Oh, okay, ma'am. Okay, ma'am. Just let, let's start with your presentation. Uh, just share your slides. Okay. Wait. <laughs> No, is it okay? Are you my Okay, thank you very much, sir. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. The Honorable Dr. Anita Supreme BKD as the first research teacher. The Honorable Dr. Nurahmawati MPD. The Honorable for All Committees Global Professional Institute Global Professional. The Honorable Dr. Andi Asrifan as the best motivator to me and invite me here. The Honorable, my beloved parents, thanks for watching. And my beloved brothers and sisters, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good evening, everyone, and good evening, Indonesia. First of all, let us pray and pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because of His grace and mercy, we can join together. And let us pray and greet to our to our prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam who had brought us to the path of the light I am University Kasari Suparto from graduate from Brain State University of Makassar South Sulawesi Indonesia Today I would like to present the result of the research entitled The Analysis of Teaching Methods in Teaching Reading Ability The meaning of Indonesia, analisis metode pengajaran dalam mengajar kemampuan membaca. Ladies and gentlemen, the first point, what is the meaning of reading? Here, as we know that reading is a language acquisition, communication, and of sharing information and ideas 
Like all languages, it is interactions between the text and the reader, prior knowledge, experiences, attitude, and a language community, which is culturally and socially situated. So, the problem of teaching reading to read specifically by uh, identify factors that affect reading ability to students is a very, very important to determine the right strategy and method in the lesson. Here, according to Asriani 2010, page number 7, found that reading is the process of constructing meaning through the dynamic interaction among the readers, uh, the readers accessing knowledge. Meanwhile, according to Nurjanna Widiani, 2015, uh, page number 12, found that reading is one of the language accessing skills besides speaking, writing, and listening. So, in this case, the teacher should always consider the factors affecting students' reading ability, and the teacher also uses appropriate reading ability strategies, and methods in the lesson. Based on the background above, the researchers uh, interest to conduct research entitled The Analysis of Teaching Methods in Teaching Reading Ability at the 7th grade of SMP Negeri 6 Bone Bone. SMP, it means Junior High School. Okay, then, um, the researcher, firm, uh, the researcher firm weighs as follows here. Uh, what teaching method does the teacher use to influence students' reading ability at the seventh grade of SMP Negeri Nambone Bone? And then the objective of this study is to know the teaching method the teacher uses to influence reading ability to influence the student's reading ability at the 7th grade of SMP Negeri 6 Bone Bone, South Sulawesi, Indonesia. Okay, here, um, this study is expected to offer some benefit to students, English teacher, and future researchers. For the students, it can be referenced if they want to conduct, conduct relate to teaching methods in teaching reading ability. Uh, for English teacher uh, can provide a can uh, give information and to be a good guidance for the students in developing reading ability and for the future researcher uh, can provide additional information to the existing um, to the research about teaching method in teaching reading ability and here this the research is limited to the use of teaching method. The teacher, uh, the reading assessment is focused on the analysis of teaching method in teaching reading ability. Okay, uh, this chapter covers pertinent ideas on teaching method, namely the concept of reading, uh, the importance of teaching reading, and then methods of teaching and followed by a resume. Okay, here, the first, uh, the concept of reading. According to Suryani, 2013, page number four, found that reading is the process of constructing meaning from written text. So it is a, it is a complex ability uh, requiring the coordination of number of information. And the second order, according to Eva Saramawati, 2011, page number four, defined that reading as the meaningful interpretation of print or written verbal symbols. It means that reading is the result of interactions between the perceptions of graphic symbols uh, that the reader language skill and cognitive skill. So uh, the researcher uh, concludes that uh, reading ability is uh, ability in understanding uh, of information and ideas that through interactions between the, the author and uh, the reader. 
Oke, okay, here according to Suryani 2016 page number 6. Uh, there are several types of reading may appear in a language classroom as follows. The first intensive reading, extensive reading, scanning and skimming. Okay, here uh, intensive reading um, sometimes called a uh, narrow reading. It means that the students reading selections by the several several uh, several texts or several authors about the same topic for example uh, i want to do research about teaching methods in teaching reading ability so uh, so i need more references about oh what does the mean of teaching method and what does the mean of teaching reading ability and i get it um, i get it the several the several outdoors about uh, The several authors define that uh, teaching method it means that blah 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 and teaching reading it means that blah 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 the same topic it means okay, okay then uh, the second point is the extensive reading uh, it means that is the free reading is the free reading um, <clears throat> for the comprehension of uh, main idea but extensive reading here is not specific details Be why because this uh, this aims to this aim to build reader reader to in to enjoyment to reading uh, for example i like uh, i like doraemon doraemon comics so uh, when i read uh, doraemon comics I feel free reading because there is not specific details and there is there is no theory something about that. So it means that extensive reading. Okay, the third is the scanning. Hmm. Scanning is a quick reading. Is a is a quick reading. Uh, it means that it used when a specific piece of information. For for example. Uh, when we chat someone, when we chat someone, uh, we uh, we asking questions. What uh, what is your name? And then uh, I I answer. My name is Windy. So uh, that is Kenny. We just know her name. Uh, she's named Windy. And the second point is uh, a date. Apa? Date. Date. It means that when were you born? That is specific, uh, specific information, specific uh, piece of information. It means that, and um, and then formula, uh, then symbols. That is, it means scanning. Okay, the first point is the skimming. Skimming is a technique reading by scanning. <clears throat> is a, a technique reading uh, by scanning it uh, this aim that uh, to find out the main idea for example when we reading about storytelling here cinderella uh, snow white and etc so uh, that is uh, definitions of skimming Okay, here uh, according huh, according to Gustriano 2015, there are five main causes of reading. Uh, the first point is a uh, reading for specific. Reading for specific uh, is a common form of reading used to discover specific or limited information, like um, scanning, like scanning. Yes. And the second point is the uh, reading for application. It means that uh, consists of reading following instructions to make or uh, fix something. For example, I wanna, uh, I want to make a pizza, but I don't know how to make pizza. Then I have initiative uh, uh, to searching to make pizza by Google, uh, and then I get it. Oh, to make a pizza and blah 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 blah. So that is uh, that is reading for applications. We can following instructions by Google. And the third is the reading for pleasure and entertainment. Here, um, 
It means that uh, individuals read for many pleasurable uh, reasons. It, uh, for example, like uh, magazines, newspaper, uh, novels, and still many others. And the fourth point is uh, reading for ideas. Reading for ideas here uh, is uh, enhanced through uh, familiarity with the overall field of the related topics, facts, and discussions. Um, discussion. So reading for ideas, it means that focuses on the something theory. And the five, the five points is the reading for understanding. It means that requires comprehension of the relationship between the information and overall knowledge um, of the subject, of topics, of the sentence, paragraphs, and the main idea. It means that when we are reading, when we read something, we uh, we can understand and we can uh, interpretations. Okay, here the importance of teaching reading according to Sarianti 2014 state that uh, any reading component of an English language course may include a set of learning tools as follows. The first point, the ability to read a wide range of a text in English. The second, the ability to adapt the reading style according to reading to voice. And the third point is the building a knowledge of language which will facilitate a reading ability, then uh, developing an awareness of the structure of written text in English, and the last, taking a critical stance of stance for the uh, for the contents of the text. Okay, here method uh, methods of teaching. Um, according to Taxonomy Bloom 2011, uh, there are several methods of teaching. The first point is the direct instruction, drill and practice, lecturing, question and answer, discussions, mental modeling, uh, discovering, discovery, learning, and inquiry. Okay, here, direct instructions method. As we know that direct instructions, it means that to give an instructions, uh, what is important for the students to know, uh, and to give uh, students more explanations uh, about what they will do, learn, uh, do do clearly and ex uh, do clearly and effectively in the classroom. For example, uh, the teacher give us. Uh, the teacher give an instructions about us uh, about formula mathematics theory uh, for the students and and then the teacher give assignments and the students will following by this formula mathematics theory so that is direct instruction and the second point is the drill and a practice method it means that is even more um, good in nature for direct instruction. Uh, the implications here is that uh, something and a provide a strong link to the information to improve remembering. Uh, for example, here the teacher give uh, the teacher give uh, something poems for the students, and then before the students. Uh, before the students read uh, poems in the classroom, the teacher give uh, instructions before uh, how to be a good, uh, how to be a read, and how to be a good pronunciation this poems. And then uh, the teacher following, following the te uh, following the teacher uh, reading uh, read and to be a good pronunciation this poems. It means. Okay, the third, the third method is the lecturing. Lecturing is a teaching method that involves an oral presentation given by an instructor to students. It means that it is not surprising either. 
Why? Because the lecture method is usually makes the most sense, uh, especially for the large cost, uh, for the large classroom size. So many lectures are accompanied by uh, some sort of visual aid, such as um, a such as a slideshow, PowerPoint, a Word document, an image, or a photo. And then a question and answer here, as we know that a uh, question and answer to transferring message by the by asking questions and students give an answer. It means that a student receive information and then consider uh, with regard to experiences and uh, interpretations. For example, in the classroom, uh, sometimes when the lect uh, when the lecture, uh, for example, in the classroom, the lecture give explanations about uh, reading ability, reading ability in the classroom. But sometimes uh, I don't know what is the mean of uh, reading ability, and I still confuse that how to concept reading ability, and then. Uh, I always asking question for the for the teacher. Uh, Miss, what does the mean of teaching reading ability? What does the mean of reading ability? Can you give a? Uh, can you explain again? And then the teacher uh, give explanation. And oh, I can receive information about that, and I can understand. So that is question and answer method. Okay. Next, uh, discussions method here. Um, discussion method is a variety of forums of open-ended, a collaborative exchange of ideas uh, for the teacher and students, or students to the proof points of furthering uh, students' thinking, learning, um, learning, and then problem sol problem solving and understanding or uh, or literary appre appreciations, appreciation. So in this situation, the teacher concerned with a very different uh, treatment of information than uh, possible using the previous uh, methods. For example, uh, in the classroom, the uh, the teacher sometimes uh, divides divides uh, some group. Uh, and one group different different uh, theme and the second group is different theme and they are will discussions and debate sometimes uh, so that is a discussions method concept and then uh, mental modeling here um, the mental modeling the keys of mental uh, the keys the keys to using the method are modeling thinking that your students uh, can understand and providing to apply what they uh, have learned having a uh, having your student your students explain their own mental models it means the students will show up will uh will show up in the classroom and uh will read uh for example like read poems Read poems. Okay, then uh, discovery learning here. Um, discovery learning is an approach to instructions that focuses on students' personal experience as the foundations, the conceptual development. Uh, the students per class will then share a common experience that you can develop as it relates to the concepts under consideration it means that the students uh, that the students um, learn by experience learn by experience for example like since uh, since childhood this uh, this child this child like uh, like do research something and then when he become an adult oh he he is a researcher now so that is discovery learning we can uh, learn by experience 
Okay, then uh, inquiry method here, um, <clears throat> it means that uh, uses, it means that considerable, considerable amount of preparation to do and also must be prepared to teach the students how to use inquiry. The inquiry approach is that can integrate the curriculum of involving many disciplines in meaningful ways. It means that inquiry uh, methods, the teachers should uh, should be understand school curriculum before uh, the teacher teaching in the classroom. So yeah, that is focused on the school curriculum here. Okay, then a resume here. Resume, the first point is the reading is the process of looking at a series of written symbols, adding meaning from them. And then according to Study Anti 2014, states that any reading component of an English language course may include a set of, a set of learning goals for the ability to read a wide range of text in English, building a knowledge of a language which will facilitate a reading uh, ability and then the, the ability to adapt the reading style according to reading purposes for example like skimming scanning and still many others and then developing an awareness of the structure or written text in english and then taking a critical stance to the contents of the text and the last in the classroom according uh, to bloom 2011 uh, there are several methods of teaching in the classroom as follows. There is instruction, drill and practice, lecturing, question and answer, discussions, mental modeling, uh, discovery learning, and inquiry methods. Okay, uh, this part covers uh, this chapter, uh, this part covers the research method. Uh, is the research design subject of the research operational definitions of variable and then uh, instruments of the research procedure of collecting data and technique of data analysis okay research design uh, in this research the researcher uses descriptive qualitative method um, this research was conducted conducted on April 2018 uh, at SM at six junior high school Bonebone South Sulawesi Indonesia uh, the goal of the research is to analyze teaching method in teaching reading ability at the seventh grade of six junior high school Bonebone and the second point is the subject of the research the subject of the research are the teacher of the seven year students at uh, six junior high school and the number of the teacher consists of two teachers of english but the researcher took one of them as the subject okay then uh, operational definitions um okay an operational definitions of variable as follows the first point is the reading ability reading ability here is a competence to observe the information from the written linguistic uh, message and the second point is the teaching method it means that uh, the way uh, is the way the teacher uh, chooses to explain or teach materials uh, to students and the third Teaching reading ability is uh, training beginners uh, to associate uh, letters with their sound values. Okay, instruments of the research. Um, there are three kinds of instruments of the research. The first point is the researcher. In this, the researcher uh, herself aid as a known participate a participant observer uh, observer uh, to watch and observe directly the student assignment in teaching method but uh, is not uh, involved and interacted 
uh, with the students in the classroom. And the second instrument, observation checklist here, uh, their observation checklist is a direct, direct observation in the classroom. Observation checklist aims at finding, uh, finding the teaching method used by the teacher. Uh, its statement of the observation checklist offers two choices of scale, namely a yes or no. And the third interview question here uh, aim at finding uh, the learning process and ask the teacher uh, the teacher about the kinds of teaching method in teaching ready ability. It's a statement of uh, the interview over five questions. It aims at finding uh, finding out the factors of teaching method in teaching ready ability at the seventh grade students. Okay, <clears throat> then uh, the procedure of collecting data uh, in this research were as follows. The first point, the researcher explained how to do the instrument. It took about uh, 10 minutes. And then uh, after explaining the instrument to the teacher, the researcher and teacher went to the and took an hour to do the observation. And then after doing the observation, the researcher had an interview with the teacher and gave 20 minutes in Android. And the last, the researcher collected the teacher observation checklist and analysis. Okay, here, technique of data analysis. Um, the researcher will, uh, the researcher um, analyzes by the data analysis. Uh, by using the theory of Huberman models in Sugiono, uh, 2016, page number 338 until uh, 345, namely the first point is a data reduction. Data reduction is refers to the process uh, where the maze of uh, qualitative data uh, she or the researcher may obtain uh, from the observation checklist a uh, video recording and interview uh, interview questions. And the second point is the data uh, data display. It means that to draw conclusions uh, from the uh, from the mesh data. Um, Uberman's uh, Uberman's models in Sugiono suggest that a good display of data in the form of tables, charts, network, and other graphical formats is essential. Uh, this is a continual uh, process rather than just uh, just one to be to be carried out at the end of the data collection. And the third data verification here, the research uh, the research analysis should always uh, the researcher to begin to develop conclusion regarding her study. This initial conclusion uh, can then be ver verified then that that is uh, their validity examined through reference to the existing field nodes of further data collection. Okay, uh, this chapter deals uh, with the data analysis presentations of the results of the research. The instrument uh, used to get uh, the data was observation, checklist, and interview. Uh, based on the findings above, uh, based on the findings above, the researcher summarizes that the first, the teacher had different uh, activities in each meeting. And the second point is that there were eight methods used by English teacher at SMP Negeri Enam Bone Bone. It means six, uh, six junior high school, Bone Bone, South Sulawesi, Indonesia. They are uh, direct instruction, drill and practice, question and answer, discussion method, lecture, inquiry, mental modeling, and discovery learning models. And then uh, the teacher had different ways in using uh, for in using or applying the methods 
and then the students get positive response for the methods that teacher apply and the lecturer found difficult uh, difficulties in applying the method especially in motivating the students and the way to solve it is by making solving activities in applying the method Okay, here, uh, discussion. Uh, after analysis, the data of the findings, the researcher present, present the discussions of the data. Uh, the first meeting here, uh, in the first meeting, the teacher uses uh, direct instructions and drill, uh, drill and practice method. Uh, this method used to give an experiment experiment to the to the students in implementing the skill that they learn in the classroom yeah. the so in a learning process the teacher gives um, instructions to read the text in 15 and uh, 15 until 20 minutes after that the teacher uh, invites the students to read the text uh, in front of the class and uh, front of the class uh, one by one okay. and then uh, in the second meeting uh, there are three methods the teacher uses namely lecture method uh, discussions and question and answer method uh, they <clears throat> question okay so uh, they are so the researcher here the researcher urges that a uh, lecture is the method that present by using verbal methods. Uh, this method could be boring for the student because it makes the student just listen, uh, just listen to teachers' explanations in the classroom. Uh, in discussions, but in the, uh, but in discussions methods, there is uh, there is the exchange information between students and. Uh, students and students or students and teacher and then in this meeting uh, the teacher gives explanations first the teacher uh, the teacher divides students uh, into some group and each group discusses the materials and uh, after each group presents their assignment Okay, and then the third meeting here, the teacher uses mental modeling and discussion. Um, in a learning class, uh, the teacher divides, divides students into some uh, group and they discuss in their group. Uh, after they uh, finish it, uh, the teacher chooses one student from each, uh, from each group to present their assignment in front of the class in this meeting um in this meeting the teacher focuses focuses on how to uh, make the student motivated and active in the classroom and the last meeting uh, there are there are two methods that the teacher uses are inquiry and discovery learning but the researchers say that uh Said that inquiry and discovery learning are similar uh, methods that focus in making uh, students find and uh, solve problem in their uh, in their daily life, such as in a school uh, environment and etc. They but they have a different uh, step in implementation uh, implementation in the classroom. Okay. Um, this chapter, uh, this chapter deals with uh, research conclusions and suggestions based on the data analysis. The first point is the conclusions here. Uh, based on the findings and discussions at the previous chapter, the researcher found that uh, found that in teaching reading, uh, in teaching reading, uh, the English teacher at six junior high school, Bone Bone, South Sulawesi, Indonesia over applied six of eight methods such as drill and practice direct instructions question and answer uh, mental modeling lecture and discussions methods 
uh, especially for inquiry and discovery learning, are seldom used by uh, the teacher by the teacher during the research uh, process. Why? Because uh, because in because a student's background because students' background knowledge are still limited in the classroom. And then a suggestion here, uh, pre the researcher presents for a suggestion as uh, follows. Uh, the, the English teacher at the school are suggested to use more methods uh, in teaching reading ability. The teacher should find uh, the best method in motivating the students to learn, enjoy, and focus on the learning process. And the second point is the, the next researcher who wants to conduct a research to overcome the teaching method in teaching reading uh, ability can use one of the methods that mentioned in this conclusion. Okay, so I think enough. Thank you very much for your attention. Wabillahi taufiq wal hidayah. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. And good evening, everyone. And good evening. Thank you, man. Salma, go ahead. Um, our next speaker is Dr. Noor Raj Matha Mawathi. I would like to introduce our guest today. Dr. Noor, ma'am, is a lecturer at English Education Faculty of Education, graduated from Education Faculty, Modern University in 2005, with a master's degree in Telsol International. She accomplished her doctorate degree at University of Nagari, Makassara, majoring English education in 2018. During completing her bachelor degree, she joined the Canada World Art Program in 1998. She has a Fulbright teaching assistant at Stanford University in 2006-7. During her doctoral study, she received a scholarship from the Indonesian government in a form of scientist-like program at the Leeds Metropolitan. University UK in 2013. Her research interest is in English language teaching, second language acquisition, and culture. Please give a warm welcome to Dr. Noor. Hello, ma'am. Hello. Hello. Hello, Salma. Am I audible? Hello. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Thank you. Uh, no. Thank you. Now it's just is your. All right, I'm going to uh, do a screen sharing, and I hope that uh, it will be succeed <laughs> because I failed. When um, I, uh, just I, just uh, follow my instruction. Open your PPT and press F5. Then yes. share your screen. All right. How is it? Yeah, now is it okay? Now is it okay? okay great. Oh, <laughs> Thank oh, you. Okay. 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 All right. So Go good ahead. evening, everybody. Uh, it's evening now in uh, Samarinda, is Kalimantan, Indonesia, and uh, I'm Wati, and I'm going to uh, bring up a topic related to the use of literature in developing students' cultural awareness in EFL context. I think some parts of what uh, I'm going to talk about has already been uh, has already been touched by uh, the first speaker today, uh, Professor Amitab. All right, uh, let me go on. Uh, So here are the content of my presentation. So I'm going to go a little bit on introduction and some key concepts related to uh, the use of literature in uh, EFL teaching. And then secondly, uh, the third is the proposed teaching model. And I'm going to go to the conclusion after that. 
So uh, as we know that English becomes international language of communication in modern technological world, and this leads to the process of globalization in which it increased the population mobility and leads to creation of multilingual and multicultural societies. And what happened? So in multilingual and multicultural societies, uh, cross-cultural interaction exists in African texts. So in that point, we need to improve our students' cultural awareness because uh, they will deal with people from different cultural background. And how are we going to do that? We are going to use literature as one of the potential source for language development. And how are we going to introduce this uh, literature in our teaching? We are going to use flipped classroom as an approach in the revolution industry 4.0, yeah. So uh, as we know that sometimes literature is considered to be interesting and relaxing. So it is used for fun and enjoyment. And it is also uh, facilitated a specific aspect of foreign language learning, such as reading comprehension, or to help learners improve their communicative skills. Uh, in other occasion, it is used to prompt or contextual other activities or elicit certain responses. And the classes will share and discuss literary texts to help uh, establish and improve cooperation. Uh, literature is also used to learn about target language cultures, and at times it is read. It is read to be interpreted and analyzed and appreciated simply for what it is. Uh, literary texts uh, employed in foreign language classes usually to practice pronunciation, learn new vocabulary, study grammar, as uh, what the previous uh, speaker also mentioned, yeah. enhance learners' accuracy of fluency and also develop uh, the four skills. Uh, however, literature can never be reduced solely to its text level and become mere language teaching materials. Its potential includes developing personal and social skills as well as culture-related and literature-related aspects which supersede mere foreign language teaching. Okay, so the proposed teaching model here is the teaching English through the combination of using literary works and online platform. So the online platform that we use here is Gesco, and this platform is actually uh, developed by uh, some Indonesian scholars to help uh, the students to uh, be able to do the online teaching, to help students to do the online teaching. And the mixed methods that we are going to apply in this proposed teaching model is the language-based, content-based, and personal growth. And it is a complete method on using literature in language classroom. So the use of technology is aimed at completing the mixed method, and it gives more chances to learners to understand the text, yeah? Because by using online website, or online, uh, online uh, mode, the learners can access, access the text and do the exercise uh, independently everywhere and every time. So there are two steps uh, for conducting the mixed methods uh, by using online website, and it is uh, taken from uh, the designing in class activities for flipped classroom. So the first we design the pre-class. In the pre-class session, the students have to access reading, uh, to access reading, uh, to read the literary text in the uh, site uh, given, and they will be asked to do the exercise by answering some multiple choice. Uh, question. So this type of question is actually um, not only multiple choice question. The teacher can design different types of uh, questions uh, for the students to answer. Um, but uh, when teacher design 
uh, the question, uh, the testing uh, point should cover, for example, comprehension question, guessing meaning from context, and also grammar point that model in the text because um, the point here is not only to get the students to understand the text, but also to help the students to improve uh, their language. So next we move to the in-class, yeah. This in-class process can be done offline or online, yeah. So the teacher will do a cross-check on the numbers of students taking the online exercises. Only students who have done the online exercises may join the class. Yeah. Why? Because we also need to build uh, the sense of responsibility from the students. Uh, so that's why we set up a regulation there, a rules for the students, so that then they uh, the rules is intended to help the students to engage from the beginning of the uh, of the of the teaching until the end uh, or until the last part. All right. So the in-class activity will involve uh, three stages: firstly, briefing, and then building ideas, uh, and then a presentation and feedback. So this is one of the examples. So these short stories is actually uh, attached in the in the in the link that is given. So the student should uh, join the link so that they can access this reading text and then followed by some questions to get them understand what they are reading. And. This is the example of uh, the question. Uh, for example, where does the story uh, for reading comprehension, uh, the samples of the questions are, where does the story take place? Who is the narrator? And then uh, when we ask the student to guess meaning from the context, uh, we can ask them to see, for example, here, the red sweater was uncomfortable because it felt, so they will be asked to feel uh, some missing part and then the red sweater look old and and for the grammar point uh, module in the text we could ask them to fill in the word uh, the word form so for example the uh, verb the noun adjective and adverb or some ideas that uh, professor Amitabh already presented in his presentation previously and those activities uh, could be put uh, in here in 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 the uh, in class activities to or uh, in the pre class activity and then later will be discussed in the uh, in class activities and that i think will give more uh, and that will uh, help the students to get uh, to understand comprehensively to understand the text comprehensively and uh, we also get the students to do a discussion, yeah, and this discuss discussion of a story uh, will help the students to uh, get the idea of each part of the text, yeah. So, for example, uh, related to the text previously, uh, do you agree with Russell's idea that no matter how old we are, we always have the all the ages we have been inside of us why or why not if you were mrs price how would you have handled the situation with wrestle yeah so this type of question um are questions with uh, which explore um students ideas students perspective toward what they are reading and this will include uh uh, include their their own perspective and their uh, cultural background and also their experiences. Yeah, so this will make the students engage more in the activity. So how can we uh, develop the cultural awareness? through a literary text, yeah? So the process, the interpretation of literary text by foreign language learners is not the same as by native speakers. So um, 
because they interpreted uh, with different social cultural background and from their own personal background. So therefore, the teachers task to ensure the students use their skill to understand the explicit and implicit meanings in a, in a given context. I think uh, Professor Amitabh already uh, mentioned about the context as well in uh, his presentation. Uh, so the process of understanding explicit and implicit meanings will help stimulate cognitive and affective development of the learners. Um, the intuit intuitive uh, responses to uh, literary text uh, is very important process of reading literature. Why? Because when interacting with literary text, foreign language learners infer meanings, which makes reading more enjoyable and stimulating from the, uh, for them. So active engagement in the exploration of linguistic and cultural process in the literary text make the students encounter new discourses and accept them. Yeah, uh, Reading literary texts uh, critically and will help students to reflect their idea from intercultural point of view. Um, why? Uh, because as um, I mentioned before that uh, students um, have different cultural background and have different personal background. Um, and this will make them interpret uh, the text differently. Yeah. And this also will help them to gain new uh, different experiences. And this will develop their self awareness, which necessary for understanding and accepting another culture. So how is the process of raising cultural uh, awareness occurred? Yeah, so it is started from uh, when the teacher select the literary text. Yeah, so the teacher should uh, select text which um, has the linguistic proficiency, maturity level, and interest uh, that suits their students. Yeah. Uh, only uh, only uh, text which has uh, which not uh, demanding and uh, appropriate uh, with the students' maturity level will help the students to uh, be motivated to read or to engage with the text. And then the next process will be creating analytical and creative texts. Yeah, one of the example of the activity is by uh, put them in a discussion, uh, discussing the content of the text as well as dis discussing some language part of the context. Yeah, uh, and also perhaps the syntax, uh, syntactical parts of the uh, text itself. Uh, why, uh, why the analytical and creative task is important because it will engage learners cognitively and effectively uh, by interpreting foreign language culture uh, from their point of view and develop critical awareness, tolerance, and empathy for otherness. What about the early stage foreign language learners? What can teacher do? Teacher can use picture book and ask students the content of the language and compare similarities and differences between their own culture and foreign culture. Uh, it is important to note that uh, explaining cultural import, uh, information to young learners should be put on encouraging them to discover and uh, find out information for themselves so that they become aware of cultural differences. So. Uh, I think uh, the main point uh, of raising cultural awareness can be started uh, can be started from identifying uh, differences and similarities, and uh, by identifying these uh, similarities and differences, uh, the the students could uh, be more aware on the uh, on on the part of culture in the text and in the daily life and also uh, in 
uh, in the use of uh, the foreign in, in learning the foreign language and using them in communication or in their daily life. Okay, so what can we conclude? Uh, first, using literature in language classroom in EFL context is potential pedagogical tool. Not only have the linguistic aspect of the language that can be explored, but also the lit literature itself as a content. Secondly, to improve cultural awareness, the personal growth approach can provoke students to explore the cultural aspect of the text. And using a flipped classroom, uh, in the pre-class, students can create the literary work and measure their understanding about the work, namely language and content base. And therefore, in in-class, students have better preparation for discussing the story deeper uh, for content base and personality. Thank you very much for the time. I'm going to give back the uh, opportunity to the moderator. Thank you. Thank you, May. Thank you. Thank you, May, for your valuable insight on using literature in EFL contents in the Dabrumi student culture awareness. It's really a important and, and interesting lesson for students and teachers thank you ma'am you're very welcome now it's time for q a so i would, I would like to request our uh, rest of the speakers dr amit Apsar and adam wendy ma'am uh, switch on your camera and now we are going for our last part q a so our participants are requested to ask their question into comment box and we'll sort out the question to the speakers and speakers will answer the question as early as possible so it's time for Q and A. Dr. Amitabh, sir, are you there? Dr. Amitabh, sir, are you there? Hello, Dr. Amitabh, sir, are you there? Hello, sir. Ma'am, one question I already found it. Please look at it. Look at your screen. All right. Uh, so the question is the advice that I can give to help move forward when they lost inspiration to read and write literature. What can we do as a teacher? Um, I think what uh, we can do is uh, giving them uh, some um, stories. Uh, so I, I take this as an example in my class. Uh, I thought 
uh, extensive reading in the class. Uh, and most of the students, uh, in the beginning of the class, most of the students mentioned that they never read a storybook brief before. So what I did was I provide them with uh, short storybooks, uh, very short stories, uh, so that they can uh, get the ideas of uh, the storybook in English. And then after that, uh, I asked them to uh, search for, uh, for themselves the storybook that uh, interests them. And then um, later on, uh, I asked them to make a project in the class. The project was to introduce the storybook that they uh, read to their friends in the classroom. Uh, and um, that was a successful thing because uh, some of the students said that um, before they didn't read book, but after the extensive reading class, they read a couple of books and they uh, can understand the content of the book because they can share it with their friends. So I think that's one of the um, one of the ideas or suggestion. Dr. Amitabh, sir, are you there? I think Dr. Amitabh, sir, is not in here. So, ma'am, you may continue. And All right. uh, after, after two or after uh, two, three questions, we'll be uh, close the session because we are already late. All we, right. Uh, we are 32 minutes late. And dear participants, we are really, <laughs> really sorry for late. OK. Okay, so how can we utilize online learning method in places that is in upland to the second? Okay, so um, I think uh, online or offline learning uh, is a mode of uh, learning. And um, in online learning, I think we still can apply some uh, method or some activities that we, uh, we do, we, that we do it offline, yeah? Uh, so as I mentioned in my presentation previously, we can do a flip classroom. Yeah. Uh, in flip in flip classroom, we will ask the students to uh, explore uh, by themselves. Yeah. And that will employ the online learning. And then after that, we can meet up with the students either in online or offline. And uh, in online learning method, yeah, or when we do a synchronous meeting, for example, we can um, we can organize uh, the meeting or, or the session um, related or, or quite the same as what we did uh, in offline, yeah. So. Uh, we can ask them. We can ask them to brainstorm. We can ask them uh, to discuss the content. Uh, we can ask them to do a presentation on what they have read. Yeah. Uh, so in Zoom, for example, by using Zoom, for example, we can break them up into a small room and then a small group. I meant, uh, and in the small group, they can discuss the content and then uh, later on when we invite them to the main room, we can ask them to do a presentation. So it's more or less like that. Thank you. Okay, uh, so how to encourage students or learners to love reading books? I think by introducing them the books. Yeah, uh, as I mentioned before, that my students uh, in the university level, um, in the fourth semester, uh, they don't read a lot, so the way I and uh, the way I try to motivate them to read is by showing them the book and by giving them the opportunities to like the books. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for your uh, beautiful presentation and your. Uh, time, ma'am. Actually, uh, 
today we are we are already late because our program schedule time is 2 hours long it's 6 to 8 pm right. but it's almost 35 minutes long so dear okay. participants i am i'm cordially i'm cordially sorry uh, for this late actually uh, we have to sacrifice something to uh, learn different something this is my opinion and from today's session uh, it's also proved that uh, what we, if we want to learn more and more then uh, somebody will define the tax y a b c d which already i will learn from the beginning stage of our uh, our beginning stage at a primary level 1 2 3 4 a b c d now this is the define or uh, definition between uh, primary level or higher level and now we are focusing on higher level based on primary level this is the uh, reason so uh, thank you so much ma'am again thank you so much and dear participants okay. uh, please forgive us for uh, our miscommunication of time and uh, it's a request that uh, we uh, mm, posted we comment lots of link uh, of review so it's a request if our webinars helps a little bit and it's look helpful uh, helpful for you and it can helps uh, or, it, or it helps you in personal and professional life please it's a it's a request leave a review in our page section leave a review in our page section we already shared the link in comment section so it's a request it's a, a request from uh, our bottom of heart so please do the needful and for today's session you, at the same procedure you don't need to uh, submit any code just uh, click on www.eduigp.com and you have to just uh, what do you have to do you have to uh, if you new if you are new in this website so you have to create a, a create an account must this account is for lifetime so only one account for lifetime after that select your program title select your program title and uh, when you click on uh, program title then one button will raise that is enroll now so click on enroll and the, after that click on the same button get your certificate without any code so cl click on get your certificate this is the procedure and you can verify your certificate from anywhere anytime at, at the bottom of the certificate you can see a uh, link will be shared with you this is the certificate certificate verification link and you can download the previous all certificates at the same platform and at the same system and you can also attend the previous uh, last 70 69 to winners at the same process and our next session will be held on 20 uh, sorry our next session will be held on uh, 20 uh 22 march uh title would be winning the battle within and our uh program will be held on 7 pm bst utc plus six so thank you so much thank you so much ma'am and uh thank you so much uh dr noor ma'am doc, uh, dr amita sir and wendy ma'am Thank you so much, so much, so yes. much for your beautiful time and beautiful uh, presentation and support. It's a, it's a cordial support for us. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. Their participant certification link also shared in comment box so you can check the link also from comment box